I got the beauty of holiness. I got the beauty of the Lord. I got the beauty of His salvation. I got the oil of joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to play that song, Emily. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn your heart towards heaven. Don't turn your heart towards men. You know what? If you listen to men, you know, we, we, one of the things, let me just tell you something. Listen to me. One of the things that men of, of the spirit have discovered is that if you can create a situation where people aren't being as distracted, more people will receive from God. And we try our best to just flow in the Holy Ghost and not really set up so much of a, of a rehearsal to where that everybody knows what they're doing. But we, when you're going to have to participate and just say, look, you know what? I'm going to keep my eyes towards Jesus. We want you today, we want you to so hook up in the realms of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That everything that you have need of is supplied to you. Every problem, every issue is solved and answered for you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Sing, sing that song, will you? Yes, yes. I want you to sing it again, sing it again. No more of this sorrow, no more doubt and pain. I yield myself to you, Lord, send the latter rain. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. No more 
Yes, Lord. Sells to you, Lord. Dear people, I want you to just realize that within the framework of what you just said, sang, hunger can grow. Hunger doesn't really grow just because you came to the meeting. It's definitely the meeting place is, the, is, is certainly where you're going to have spiritual rapid growth poured on you. It's certainly the place where you're going to have the direction given to you, spiritual gifts imparted to you. But growth and maturity really, it has to be nurtured in your own individual relationship with the Lord. I've watched as many people in my life and I've watched, you know, in different places as, as I've observed other ministers flowing in the anointing. So many people, they only really can hook up when they come to the meeting. Well, that's good because that's the beginning. But then it's just a threshold. It's just a certain level. You can't go past that. You hit the ceiling, as it were, of how you know how to receive and function in the Lord. But if you take what God gives you and you take it home and it begins to become a part of your life to where that you are able to receive all that the Holy Spirit is supplying in all of His goodness and His love and His joy the things that he gives to us to be able to function in the word of knowledge and the gifts of healing, all the manifestation of the spirit. What happens is there you, you mature and you grow and what grows with that is a great hunger, a desperation for the Lord, a desperation that is not expressed as, as human desperation would be expressed in sorrow and sighing, anxiety and fear, the desperation that is expressed in faith and confidence and joy and rejoicing that lays hold on the presence and the divine glory of the living God. This is what Papa has for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, he gave me the oil of joy. Oil of joy. Say, I have the oil of joy. I have the garment of praise. Say, I have the beauty of salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Can you imagine going looking at yourself in the mirror and going, Am I, do I have my beauty on? Is, how, how is my beauty today? I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if you go look in the mirror and blind yourself? <laughs> because the light and the beauty are just so bright. You get women look in the mirror and go, I don't need makeup today. I'm already made up. Amen. <laughs> ha, would it be wonderful if you found a relationship with the Lord that he has for you where you're not having to say, oh God, please fill me with your joy because I feel so miserable. But you could walk around in an, an, an the oil of joy. See, the Lord, look, you must understand, the Lord Jesus received the oil of joy because he loved righteousness and hated evil. God anointed him with the oil of joy above all of his companions. And you know, when we were ministering just a little bit real briefly at the end of Sunday night service, and I was talking about Isaiah 55, 5, how the nations would, would run to you and, 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 and come to uh, where you were having a meeting and lay hold on you. That's just a real loose translation because the, the glory of the Lord's in your midst. And you can see that the Lord says, so seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his thoughts. Huh? Amen. What, he's telling, what the Lord is doing, he's just telling us, look, if you want this realm of good, divine glory, there is a change that has to take place in your life. Hallelujah. So you can be seated. <laughs> blessed is the name of the Lord. Say, blessed is the name of the Lord. Name Say, I am the Lord's. I am the Lord's. And he is mine. And he is mine. What all do you have that's yours? Do you have some things that's yours? Sure you do. You got some personal possessions. 
If I came and grabbed it, you'd go, hey, wait, wait a minute, that's mine. Uh, if I went, I could grab it, and you might smile on your face and say, yeah, I just recently got that pastor, isn't that nice? And then, yeah, everything be good conversation. So I started walking out the door with it. <laughs> and you go, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, I didn't give that to you. I mean, there must be some kind of misunderstanding. That is mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, to win, when people get into a place where they have a personal relationship with the Lord like that, then they'll understand, command ye me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. They'll understand that God is theirs. They won't be wondering anymore. It won't be an abstract concept. I wonder if God loves me today. I wonder if he likes me today. I wonder if I'm good enough. I wonder if I've got his attention. You'd be rather saying, Lord, I know you always hear me. Lord, I, I'm not, I know, God, that every prayer and every petition that I bring to you is heard by you. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's a wonderful place to, know, to, to, to live and, and a wonderful thing to know. That's why John says that we here in this place, knowing the love of God, which passes knowledge, knowing this love of God, here we're rooted and grounded and settled. Paul said that. And then John moves on and says, if you dwell in love, you dwell in God. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of love? Relationship love. God has so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but doesn't have a relationship with him. Oh, but what happens when you begin to walk in a relationship? Jesus says, if you love me, you obey me. And if you obey me, then my father will love you. We'll come make our dwelling place with you. My goodness. And, and that, wow, what a wonderful place to start. And, and, you know, I think that what happens is people don't really realize the accuser and the enemy of their soul that's constantly condemning constantly trying to bring a distance and a separation between you and the Lord so you can't walk in this confidence. So I'm going to spend some time talking to you about repentance. I'm going to spend some time to you talking about the gift of God. Can I talk to you about the yeah. gift of God? The gift of God allows you to have a good conscience before God. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Wow. The gift of God affords you the privilege and the, and the opportunity to be forgiven of all of your sins and then to be, if you, if you, if you find yourself falling and, and coming short of, the, of, of all that Father has purposed for you, then what he's going to do is uh, all you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you're in, he'll wash away your sins so that you can have and continue to have a right standing with God so long as you have a sensitive heart. I've watched where people have hardened their hearts. You know, they harden their hearts because they, get in, they become bitter, they become unforgiving, they become resentful. You know, and <clears throat> many times a lot of that happens because you take advice from the wrong person. You better watch who's giving you advice. You don't know what all they believe. You know, they don't, you don't know what all uh, it, uh, is on the inside of them that's putting that sentence together. You don't know what all uh, uh, bitterness and uncleanness might be on the inside of them that's giving you that counsel. You don't have to be careful. You just have to be careful. Because there's, you know what, and, and it's amazing to me how that the Lord gives to us such giftings around us, giftings uh, of the Holy Ghost to where that there is the Spirit of wisdom and the spirit of counsel and where you can see that wonderful committed love and grace of God ministering to you through an individual or through some group of leadership and yet people just run off and go take advice from anybody. You better be careful because all that's going to do is stumble you up. God's given you a gift and he wants you to live in this gift. Can I present a, a wonderful, glorious thing to you about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus went everywhere re preaching the gospel of the kingdom saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, what was he doing? Was he being mean to everybody? Was he developing a culture of condemnation? Is that what he was doing? Was he browbeating everybody? Is that the message of Jesus Christ? No. He, he said, uh, I come not to the condemn the world, but that the world through me might live, might have life. He, he came, the world was already in condemnation. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came declaring a means by which you and I could escape the condemnation. So he's saying, repent. Repent of, uh, repent of the way that you've been living. Re I'm going to give you an opportunity. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be born again. I'm going to give you an opportunity to be born of the Spirit. I'm going to give you an opportunity to have right standing with God. Would you like it? I'm going to give you an opportunity now so that your life can begin in the Holy Ghost. And from this day forward, you're going to turn instead of walking according to the course of this world, according to the spirit of disobedience, according to the God of this world, you're going to turn and you're going to now walk according to the course of the Holy Ghost, according to God, who is the living God in Christ Jesus. 
Huh? This is the this is the gift of repentance. The gift of repentance. Here we are. We were slaves. We were bound. We had a just imagine having a, a choker chain around your neck, and you are led by a short chain and and and, and uh, by an evil taskmaster, and he's pulling you into every one of his lust and every one of his iniquity, and he's teaching you every day how to hate. He's teaching you every day how to be upset. He's teaching you every day how to live in division and live in strife. He's teaching you every day how to uh, how to get what you want at the expense of any of everyone. It doesn't matter. You run over top of whoever so long as you can get whatever it is that you want. I mean, that's, that's the spirit of the world. That's living in hate, hating one another, and, and, and enjoying it and not even knowing uh, to how, how to live any other way. And then all of a sudden, the Lord Jesus comes, interrupts all that, and says, I'm going to grant to you the gift of repentance unto life. Think about that. I'm going to grant to you the gift of repentance unto life. This Jesus standing there saying this to you and to me. Do you want to walk another way? Uh, at that moment of salvation. Right now, he's saying it to the whole world. Do, would you like to live another lifestyle? i got another lifestyle for you. That's a gift of repentance. To grant unto us the gift of repentance, to, the ability to repent, uh, so that we might now live the God kind of life, so that we now might be instructed and, guide and guided and led by the Holy Ghost and taught the ways of God. And so somebody's a newborn babe, and now they, they've repented, they've been given the gift of life, they've been turned by the power, the miraculous power of God, and every day now they're being taught to walk the way that um, the Lord Jesus showed us the way that the kingdom of God uh, describes the character, nature, and manner, and conduct of God Almighty. And, you know, as a newborn babe, you uh, are going to stumble. As a newborn babe, you're going to easily be influenced by unholy emotions. You're going to holler and scream and have a bad attitude, don't know how to live in the goodness. Let me, let me, can I tell you? The one thing, the one secret that I have learned above all other things in my life, walking with the Lord most of my life, I have learned this. I have learned that if people would simply mature enough in the Holy Ghost to feel the joy, to feel the love, and to feel the goodness before they ever make any decision or before they ever decide to do anything or respond to any difficult situation or as far as that goes, any situation. If they would just feel the love and feel the joy and feel the goodness, then ultimately out of that you're going to make right decisions. You're going to have a right words and right speech in your mouth. You're going to have a right interaction with people that are around you. We're always at this crossroads. We're always here. You and I are always here. And some people are just doing this. They're going, they're, they're at this crossroads where, you know, they're once again in a hard and a difficult situation. Instead of saying, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Let me feel your goodness. Let me feel your love. Let me feel your joy. Fill me up with this wonderful realm of heaven. And giving place to the Holy Spirit to lead them. Because I'm going to tell you, Holy Ghost is not going to lead you apart from the joy and the love and the goodness. You know that you're being led by God because of that peace, because of that over. Overwhelming, one overwhelming expression that he supplies to us. What happens is earthly concerns, the, 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 the storm of emotion and circumstance would try to overwhelm us, fear, um, discouragement, uh, disappointment, a, 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 a sense of offense and transgression. And then what we do is we react out of that. Then what we do is we speak out of that. Then what we do is we make decisions out of that. And here's what we're like. We're like this. We receive this gift of salvation. Now to be taught of the Holy Ghost. To learn to walk in God. And we take one or two steps along the journey of life. Right? Hearing God the Holy Ghost teach us and instruct us. And, you know, two steps. We're in church. We're in the prayer meetings. Are you with me? We sing songs. We've learned them all. Uh, we know some verses of Scripture. Maybe even read the whole Bible. But every time we are at the point where God's wanting to develop us and mature us, where we're at that crossroads, or are we going to walk in our own frustration? Are we going to walk in a sense of being overwhelmed? Are we going to walk and be steered and guided by the circumstances of life? At that point, instead of saying, Stop everything. Holy Spirit, overwhelm me with your goodness. I want, to, I want your joy, your peace, your love. You can't say, you really can't say at that moment um, so much, oh God, give me your direction. Because you can't even deal with that. 
Oh, Lord, let me, uh, give me the right answer. Show me exactly what I'm supposed to do. No, he's going to show you exactly what you're supposed to feel. Okay? And, and, and when you turn your heart, and, and there, you can't do that. You can't do that if Jesus is in everything. Because if earthly things and earthly cares are something, they're important to you, you're going to have a double eye. You're going to look at Jesus, you're going to look back at that. You're going to look at Jesus, you're going to look back at whatever it is that you're concerned about, what's very important to you. You're going to look at Jesus and look back. But if all of a sudden that doesn't matter, and you say, Lord, it doesn't matter. None of these things matter. I just want to know you. I want to walk with you. I thank you that you granted me repentance unto life. I thank you, God, that you have given me such a great salvation. Lord, I don't want to be carried about by the storm of this circumstance. I don't want to carry about by the wind of this emotion and all these various things. Things belonging to fear and discouragement, disappointment. I want only those things that belong to you. Now, the Holy Spirit in that place as you're looking at Jesus and worshiping him and, said, and, and, and turning your heart away from earthly cares and, and earthly interests, the Lord's now filling you with a heavenly interest and a heavenly care. And now you get to go ahead and start walking on with the Lord. Otherwise, you're just standing there. And here's what you're doing. You're constantly making the decision of all upset, mean, aggravated, unhappy, sorrowful, sad, disappointed, murmuring, complaining, doubt, uh, a, a sense of, of not being loved, and all those other things come around uh, with that, one, that, that uh, terrible uh, circumstance called the storm of emotion. There you are, you're standing there. Now all of a sudden you say, you know what, I, I don't want to live like this. I'm sorry for yelling. I'm sorry for screaming. I'm sorry for getting upset. Oh, God, forgive me for making that wrong decision, choosing to do that thing. Because one problem leads to the next problem to the next problem. One disappointment to the next disappointment to the next disappointment. One sin to the next sin to the next sin. It really does. And then just come walk back over here and you get back here with the Lord and you're standing here. And the Holy Ghost saying, let me teach you how to walk in my joy now. Let me teach you how to walk in the jo oil of joy. Let me give you the oil of joy. Let me teach you how to walk in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Let me teach you how to be comforted day in, day out. Let me show you how to have a garment of praise, how to continually give thanks and not murmur anymore because all of a sudden something comes along, you didn't get what you wanted, now you're just complaining, now you're murmuring. Here you go again. When in reality, the Lord should just take another step with me. Because when you do, all of a sudden, you find a place to stand here now. You're standing over here in this place of praise. You know that now when you're attacked, when things are coming against you, that you don't go with those circumstances. You don't complain. You don't murmur. You don't find yourself being all, you know, down and out. Rather, you just lift your hands and you begin to worship the Lord because you say all things uh, work together for good to those who are who know the Lord, who are called according to his purposes in Christ Jesus. Huh? You, just, you find yourself giving thanks. You find yourself rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoicing every more. Continually here in this garment of praise. Now you found this place. You're living in this place. And, you're, and you get to walk along this way. Here's what happens. Now you're back over here. And now you went over here and you, 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 you did things that you shouldn't do. Now you're all discouraged. You listen to me because I'm talking to you. Huh? I'm talking to everybody who wasn't listening to me. <laughs> and you did wrong and you messed up. You did something you shouldn't have done. And now you just stand here because now you just sulk. You sulk. And then Satan comes along, condemns you, and you say, yeah, that's right, I'm miserable. <laughs> yeah, um, and I can't do anything like that. And the Lord's always calling. He's, just, he's never changed his mind about it. He's just, come on, let's go. Let's do this thing. Let's walk this way. He never got disappointed one moment. <laughs> he knew exactly what all you needed to learn when he gave you the gift. The gift of repentance is your ability, your privilege now to learn how to walk with Jesus, to learn how to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. Don't listen to everybody's opinion. Listen to God's opinion. It's very simple. He hasn't, he hasn't made it complex. He hasn't, he hasn't given you some kind of crazy formulas that you've got to memorize and, and some kind of crazy equations that you've got to learn how to solve. He just simply says, walk in love. Be clothed with humility and walk in love. He just simply says, look, come up here and live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. What is that like? Well, that's like love and joy and peace and goodness. What's that? Oh, that's like abundant life. That's like unlimited life. That's everlasting life. That's unmeasurable life. That's unmerited life. This is the life of God. This is the very kind of life that God lives. This is the kind of life that God woke up with this morning. See, all of a sudden, now God is mine. 
God is mine and I am his. I belong to him and he belongs to me. This gift of salvation where the Lord looks at somebody like you and me, the way we were, and he looks at people all over the, San Diego right now and they are alienated by wicked works and their whole life and their own manner of life and probably the life of their parents and their grandparents all the way back to Adam has been everything that has been taught of them that is opposite of God and the Lord saying, I'm going to give you a gift. Would you like a gift? The gift I'm going to give you is immediate, instantaneous reconciliation. Everything will be cleansed. All of the power of darkness that's trained you, held you, it will be instantaneously broken off of you. Would you like the gift? God has granted to all men this wonderful gift of repentance unto life, an ability to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. And there's no way to be right with God except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Buddha cannot break the chain. Krishna cannot break the chain. Muhammad cannot break the chain. Moses could not break the chain. Moses talked about another that would come. And all the prophets testified that this gift of repentance would be granted to us in Christ Jesus. I'm getting ready to read some of the verses of Scripture to you that help you understand this a little bit more. People think repentance is that now, I, 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 now I've come to the Lord and, 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 and I, He's given me the gift of life and I'm instantaneously fully matured. And then if I mess up at all, oh my goodness, I must have not repented. I must have not repented. And Satan's throwing in on that. Yeah, you did it. In fact, you are the worst person I have ever met. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm just, a, I'm just, such, a, I'm just such a terrible person. The Holy Ghost didn't miss any of that. You know, fundamentally, the Holy Ghost is an encourager. Fundamentally, he's a comforter. You know what a comforter says? He says, yes, I know you messed up, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to show you how to walk perfectly. Would you like to learn? I'm going to show you how not to mess up. Isn't that good? That's the gift. That's the gift. The gift. He didn't say to the woman at the well, okay, I know that you've been married five times and you're living with a man who's not your husband. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go through some serious counseling. And you're going to have to really show me that you want to change. And if you really come prove to me that you want to change, I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to go do. You're going to first go, you know, and, 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 and either marry that guy or... She didn't go in there, any, any of that. He said, I'm going to give you a gift because God wants to change us from the inside. I'm going to change your heart. I'm going to change your insides. I'm going to change your, your, your motivations. I'm going to change your interests. I'm going to change your outlook on life. I'm going to change those things that you desire and that you want. I'm going to give you a moment of freedom. Breathe the air of divine glory. Do you like it? we got a moment here. We're breathing the air of divine glory. And so many people are just stuck. They listen to the lies of Satan, the condemnation of Satan, the accusation of Satan. They're constantly in a sense of separation. They have not settled out on the love of God fundamentally. Not settled out on the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Not settled out on His loving kindness and tender mercies. Not settled out with what God did for us in Christ Jesus at the cross. <laughs> if I ever doubt or have a moment of doubt about God's love for me, I go and look at Calvary, for there He bore my sin away. He suffered all the pain and agony of everything I did that was wrong. I just go to the cross, Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when I go to the cross, Christ, you know what I end up doing? I end up standing good. God, you love me so much. You're amazing. All my affections, all my heart, all my desire, all that I need of, I find right there. Nothing else has those answers for me. I cannot find that answer. I cannot find that need, that comfort, that provision, that empowerment anywhere else. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a transition takes place in my life where I live there. 
Hallelujah. I live in the beauty of God's love for me expressed towards me when God suffered the pain, the agony, took the reproach of everything I did this wrong, every, every accusation, every ill conversation, every dispute. He bore the shame of it. My sin, my wrongdoing. <laughs> wow. I don't see him going, no, nah, you can't come. They're on the cross. No, go away. <laughs> you, had your, you had your opportunity. Next. <laughs> knowing, the, knowing the tender mercies of our God that are new every morning. Then there's no story like this on the planet in any of the books which men have written of God's great love to forgive and forgive again, to change our life and heart so that we might be able to learn to be taught in all his ways. The question is, do you want to be taught in all of his ways? And that's where people are at indecision. Many people are actually at a point of indecision that they want sin. It isn't just a circumstance that beset them, that overwhelmed them, the inability or the immaturity to recognize, wait a minute, you're supposed to be led by the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to give you the ability to do this. Now just depend upon Him. They, they're not, they, they, it's not about the fact that they've been unwilling or uh, to... Or, or have refused, really, to accept the, the knowledge that without Jesus you can do nothing. It's just that they, have, they love sin. They want sin. They want unrighteousness. They want it. And so that's a backslidden state. That's different. I want iniquity. I want sin. I want the lust of the flesh. I want the lust of the eye. I want the pride of life. There, you're not walking on the path of life there. You're not walking on the path of life there. Uh-uh. You now back over here. You got a chain around your neck and you're, being, you're, being, you're walking according to the course of this world. That's a backslidden state. Huh? Are you listening to me? When you're standing here going on this walk with the Lord, I want to learn it. I want to get it right. Lord, forgive me. Can you let the gift of life be enough for you, dear people? Can you let God's willingness to purchase you when you were alienated by wicked, wicked works be good enough for you? Can you let God's loving kindness and devotion to perfect everything that concerns you be good enough for you? Can you recognize that you began in the Spirit to now be finished by the Spirit? Can you recognize that He be, who began a good work in you shall also finish it? Can you recognize that? Can you just say, look, I messed up. Lord, I know I just messed up again. And God is God's goodness leading you to repentance. Leading you to say, look, stay over here in this place of being hooked up with me. Now, I want you to look at this verse of scripture in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. You know, look, can I tell you something you know, that, that, that's going to make a big transition in your life? The day that you're no longer condemned. The day that, the day, the day that you're no longer condemned. The day that you no longer receive accusation. The day you keep your heart with all diligence. The day that, that God is yours and you're his forever. And it's sealed. It's sealed. It's sealed. You know, it's, like the, it's, it's, like, it's like a woman waking up in the morning. Is my husband still here? I think he left me. Every morning. What is, he, what, is he here at night? Are you still here in the night? Feeling for him in the bed. Oh, he's still here. What a, that's torment. Get rid of that. Get rid of that relationship. That's torment. Get something fixed in that relationship. The security of knowing that he's here, they never leave you nor forsake you. Ha! Huh. My goodness gracious. To know that if he spared not his own son, uh, offered him up for the sins of all, every one of us, how much more shall he now freely give us all things? When you make the transition where you no longer have condemnation in your life, that's the moment that you begin to explode in maturity and faith and function and flow in the anointing of the Holy Ghost like never before. Huh? Amen. You know, I, I, those that are in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, have no condemnation. Amen. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm walking in the Spirit. Somebody said, well, I wasn't happy. I must not be walking in the Spirit. Hey, you walking in the Spirit, he's standing there trying to tell you, get happy. It's just that you muley. You muley. 
So we can find them, we find out whether we, a horse is muley right away. Huh? They start acting like one. <laughs> the Lord's trying to pull on you and you set your feet in the ground. No. What you, I'm not, I'm not going to be happy right now. I'm going to be sad. I'm just going to revel in my misery. And I'm going to punish some people while I'm sad. I'm going to, everybody know I'm sad. I'm disappointed with the circumstance. Or whatever it is that motivates people to live that way. When all the time the Lord says, I got a drink for you. I got a drink of life. I'm going to tell you about the Holy Ghost. See, if you know what the Holy Ghost is doing, it's a little bit easier to do it with them, isn't it? I mean, I, I know a lot of people who know what the Holy Ghost is doing, but they don't do it with them. They do whatever it is that other men are doing and other influences around them are doing or even their own emotional influence that they've never learned how to shut down. Fundamentally, they, we are going through a process where we're deciding whether or not we're going to live out our life according to our own will and our wants and wishes or whether we're going to live according to His will and His wants and His wishes. His will, His wants and His wishes for us is to have a blessed and prosperous and good and joyful life. We don't know what we want. And that's a big part of the confusion and a big part of the disappointment. Are you listening to me? Does that make sense to you? We know what the Holy Spirit's doing. He's doing love. He's doing joy. He's doing peace. But how many people do it with him? You know, it's just, this, it's got to be a transformation of our life to where we're willing to change. Can I give you some statistics? Wave at me if I can give you some statistics. Okay, good. There's a 99.9% .9 probability that you will never change. And the older you get, you, you reach that. Probably starts, it's probably when you're, when, you're, when you're young, you're moldable. But as you get older, there's a th point comes in your life where you reach a place to where that you're not going to change. And if you really believe that about yourself, you know what you do? And then, of course, talking about the natural. You would recognize, my goodness, I'm going to have to rise up and really put some serious conscious effort in this because more than because 99 percent probability, I'm not going to change. Not more than likely, I'm not going to change. We put it off to another day. 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 You know what the Lord is ministering to us? Constant, continuous change. Now He did. What? Well, here's what He did. He gave to us this radical change. See, people want to make salvation a process. It's not a process. People want to make salvation a preservation. Well, it is. The work of God and the work of grace and the work of the Holy Ghost is a preservation. It's not a process. It's a maturation. You can say that maturing is a process. That's fine. That's semantics. I just want to be very specific with what's going on. It's the issue of this work of grace, this work of God in our life, is he wants us to mature. Mature into what? Mature in the love. Mature in the joy. Mature in the peace. Mature in the goodness. Mature in the faith. Mature in the power. Mature in the authority. Mature in the likeness. Being conformed to Christ Jesus in every way. And, we, and what happens is we, we stop along the way and we begin to get disappointed and we start looking to our own human ability. And that's why Paul said in Galatians chapter 3, he said, have you begun in the spirit to now be made perfect by your own human ability, by the flesh? And we've got to watch out because by, what happens is we start working on ourselves. We start trying to better ourselves. We, we get in this mentality that somehow we can do it. And, and it's, really, it's really in the subconscious realm. We're not even conscious of, of many of the things that we say and do and why we do them and why we think them, we are not even conscious of them, not even aware of them. Well, God's come in His grace and His mercy and He's given us the ability to have the mind of Christ. He's given us the ability to be clothed with Christ, Jesus, to literally be clothed, to be endued with Jesus, to be endued with Jesus. What happens when you take it real with this and God is in front of you and you wake up in the morning and say, God is mine. I am His. I'm waking up just like God wakes up in the morning. When I, when I, what happens when I'm willing to say, Holy Spirit, overwhelm me with that goodness and that glory? Now listen, let me say this. There are a lot of people who have never experienced the glory. Or if they have, they just experience it were a spark of joy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they experienced that joy of salvation that just lasted for a couple of weeks. 
You can experience the joy of salvation in the Lutheran church, in the Roman Catholic church, wherever somebody calls upon the name of the Lord and truth. I don't care where it is. <clears throat> you experience the joy in the jungle somewhere. You can experience the joy of salvation. Huh. Father, I thank you for bringing rest and peace to these little lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, healing in Jesus' name. Healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ upon their lives, Lord Jesus. But to know the joy that is unspeakable and full of glory, hmm. They didn't have models around them for that. They didn't have ministries there, ministering by the Spirit, going deeper into the things of the, of the Spirit. And so they've really never understood what it means to be overwhelmed with the glory of God. But you in this place, the most of you, understand what that means. You've experienced that. And then you don't do anything with it? Now, shame on you. Shame on you. Now you're just going to wait till you get back to the meeting to do something. Wait, I'm, I'm going to go back to the meeting because there I can feel the glory of God. What do you mean? You got hooked up with the glory of God there so you could now live in the glory. Oh, well, I want to live in the glory of something. I don't know what, it just ain't working. I'm trying to, ha I'm trying to think but nothing's happening. I, I, I want it to be there, but it just isn't, it isn't, it isn't taking place. No, 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 no. You're choosing some things that you need to deal with. You, you're making decisions that are not in God, not in Christ Jesus. Because God, the Holy Ghost, ain't going to grab you, Kelly. He ain't going to grab you. That's what, the whole, that's, that's, that's what the unholy spirit does, not the Holy Ghost. In fact, he was a whole lot more compliable huh, to the whole program. Because usually it's like a big tug of war. You just didn't want to get choked. And maybe, maybe, maybe we've not matured enough. Maybe we've not allowed the Holy Ghost to influence us enough to where we even know how to resist the devil. We're just taken by his wind. Because that's what Paul said in Ephesians 4, verse 14. He said, the earmark of a child. See, I've got a whole bunch of scriptures that tell me very clearly and describe to me what a child looks like and how a child acts spiritually. Are you with me? Okay? Now I'm going to tell you right now, even though I know that what Paul was saying in Galatians chapter 4 concerning a child belonged to those who were under the law, I can still superimpose that upon those who continue to live a life of a child. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they differ nothing more than a servant, though they be Lord of all. They have everything available to them, but they don't know how to walk in it. They have, uh, instantaneously, we have all authority and power as a fully matured sons to not work for God, but to do His work. Huh? Right? When you are all of a sudden empowered that way, you don't have, God's not micromanaging you. No, don't do that, do this. No, no that's wrong. No, no, you know? You're actually empowered to go and do it on his behalf. What am I doing on his behalf? Everything he said in his word. I know what he wants, I know what he wants to happen. He wants to set the captives free. So the Lord has given us this privilege and this ability to minister by the Spirit. And as we're ministering by the Spirit and going in his stead... That, just by the preaching of the gospel and by that anointing that he gives, the power of Satan is broken. People turn from the power of Satan to the power of God just while you're preaching. Because I'm, I'm pushing in for, I'm pressing in for a greater anointing so that I can turn people from the power of Satan to the power of God. No, that's the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel. That happened the day that you were given, the day that you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Power from on high. Amen. Now, then let me, let me, let me, I want to bring you up to date. Can I bring you up to date? Yes. Huh? Yes. Can, can, I, can, I, can I tell you this? Yes. God's not aggravated with you. No. Can, I, can I say that? Let me say that. God's not aggravated with you. Huh? Huh? He's not just like disappointed. He's got a disappointed list. <laughs> yeah, I, I had great hopes for so and so over here. Father doesn't let up, He doesn't stop. He's got a plan. He will not in any way change his mind about who he's purposed you to be. He, he will work with you until you get it. And hopefully you get it before you die. 
It's tough to get it on your deathbed. I get it. I get it now. I get it. I get it. Okay, God, use me. Well, it's it. You're 95 years old. It's over. It's time for you to come home. Please. There is a key to that. There's a key to everything I'm saying. It comes right back to the very beginning of how I opened up this meeting today. There has to be a willingness to participate with God and the things that he gives you in the church, in the context of the church, to set, have them in your life every day. There's got to be a willingness to participate with the things that the Holy Ghost is doing so that you can have an ever-growing hunger. Somebody said, I just don't have hunger. It's because you're not obeying God. The more you obey him, the hungrier you're going to get. It's because you're not willing to participate with the Holy Spirit because the more you participate with him, the hungrier you're going to get for more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for change. I thank you, God, for change. I know that, more, I know that the probability is that I'll never change if I were left to myself. But, Lord, you've granted to me the power of change. I don't think that there is any greater description of repentance than change. Are you with me? <laughs> Here I am. I'm walking down on my way to a devil's hell, eternity without God, living in a place of continual torment and suffering. He gives me the opportunity to repent. Now I can walk in an absolutely opposite direction. Not on the same path. Totally opposite direction. Huh? Change. That's reconciliation. Change. Change. And every step is changed because every step is maturity. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to another level. It's just maturing. It's just going to another level. Well, if you call growing up going to another level, fine. It's just maturing. How many people are going to say, look, okay, Holy Ghost, I'm going to learn to do it your way. I'm going to learn to do it your way. So I'm going to go get a sledgehammer and I'm going to bust, the, bust my TV to pieces. <laughs> and I'm going to go... Um, changing my wardrobe and uh, all these things that have no value and no meaning whatsoever. Because the Lord's not interested in all that nonsense. He's interested in whether or not you're going to respond to his joy. He wants you to change and be happier. He wants you to have the oil of joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation summarized in this. He gave me beauty for ashes. You are ash ugly. In sin. And God gave you beauty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to stay with the beauty. I'm going to stay with the beauty. I'm not going to start acting ugly again. I'm going to stay with the beauty. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Huh? I mean, because really that speaks of dust to dust, ashes to ashes. That speaks of being dead. <laughs> well, I was walking around walking dead. And the Lord, he gave me the beauty. I'm going to walk in the beauty. Huh? Come on. Can you feel the beauty? Can you feel the beauty? Can you feel the beauty? If you feel the Holy Ghost, if you're being influenced by the Holy Ghost, you feel, Holy Ghost you'll feel the beauty. Amen. You could say, Holy Ghost, I don't feel any beauty. I feel ugly. <laughs> but I want to feel beauty. Please let me feel beauty. And he'll come and answer your prayer. Amen. He'll beautify you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and people, spend, people stand in front of the mirror. With every kind of gizmo and gadget. <laughs> and then they're like, I mean, goodness gracious. A Leonardo da Vinci panel of paints. And spend an hour or more with all kinds of various different colorations. And there's no time to say, I want to feel the beauty, Lord. I want to feel the beauty. We take care of all these, these bodily interests. Huh? Bathe ourselves. Beautify ourselves. Uh, buffet ourselves. <laughs> and then we're wondering why it is that, that we feel the way we feel. Why is things, why are we tra trapped in a realm of self interest? Well, we trap doing our own will. And praise God that we come to church and we go, God, not my will, but thine. And I don't think that a lot of people say it quite that deeply. I don't think it's, because it's not that quite that real. We, you just say it quite that real, you're going to have to recognize how much you've been doing your own will. Because some people have deceived themselves to believe they're doing the will of God and they're not doing the will of God. 
If they were doing the will of God, they'd walk in the beauty and walk in the oil of joy and walk in the garment of praise so that Jesus could be magnified. That's what Isaiah said. And it's not a condemnation, and it's not a beat you up, and it's not a, a beat you up sermon. It's like, come on, let's look at the condition and say, you know what? We're changing. Forget about that way of living. I'm done with that. Amen. People have to, for people to change, they have to have great catastrophe take place in their life. And then the change is only temporary. It's not lasting. Huh? You get in a car wreck, you rode the car three, four times, man, your life passes before you. You say, oh, God, get me out of this, and I'm going to forever serve you. And that lasts for about five or six hours. <laughs> as soon as the adrenaline goes away, now you're back to, you know, looking for something. Circus, seeking so hungry, I'm thirsty for something. And my thirst is, can, I'm going to go shopping. <laughs> I heard about a new pie and cake store. I'm going to go visit. They got some good coffee. Just looking for something. I'm looking for something. I'm looking. I need a new car. I need a new job. I need, somebody, I need to find somebody who's happy with me, likes me, tell me that, they, that they're happy with me and they like me. I need something. I feel so miserable, I'm going to go watch a movie. <laughs> You're filling yourself with things that cannot satisfy. Isaiah 55. You're filling yourself with things that cannot satisfy. You can never walk in the glory there. Fill your things. I heard a preacher say the other day, he says, my daddy's 90 years old. He's never been sick. He spends six to eight hours in prayer every day. He's, a, he's an intercessor. God put the mantle on him in at an early age. How would so many people say that? that were preachers, they'd, people who'd really done something in the Lord. Their parents were people of the prayer. Huh? That where they found, it's not, a, it's not a law, it's not a legalism. I don't have to be that, I don't have to do that. And now you don't have to start condemning yourself because you don't do that. Yeah, that's, you know, if I could just do that, I'll die. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I hate myself. I need some more dessert. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. I don't know what goes on in the head and in the psyche. A man is mental. If you haven't understood that, if you can't see the evidence of that, I mean, come on. Look, God has come to give to us sanity. He's come to give to us life and reality and truth and grace and purpose and ability. And we just hop between two opinions. We hover in a place of his grace and of his mercy. But how about let's just take another step and begin to shine with the brightness of his image and of his glory. How about just saying, okay, God, from this day forward to do thy will, O Lord. This is Jesus. He said, I came in the volume of the book from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21. It is written in me. The volume of the book, the whole Bible is written about Jesus. And it describes how Jesus does the will of the Father and lives only to do the will of the Father. And he says, Come follow me. And I said, Okay, Lord, I'm going to do that. What do you want me to do? You want me to go to Africa? You want me to go down there where those cannibals are and in the jungles of Indonesia? No, I'd like for you to get happy. I would like for you to be thankful for 24 hours. 24 hours of praise. Well, so I said, well, how am I going to do that? Well, maybe just have a 24-hour prayer meeting. Maybe that's a good kickoff. And we're kicking off a whole new beginning in God, okay? We're going to have a 24-hour praise and prayer meeting. And there's going to be no sorrow and sign in It's all going to be thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I praise you. You brought me into this abundant life. It's not going to be all this other stuff. Oh, God, why don't I have a better house? Why, oh, God, is my job so messed up? Why, oh, God? On oh, whatever else. Just thanksgiving and praise. He gave to you the garment of praise. You decide whether or not that garment of praise is that what you're going to put on. I put on this coat this morning. Huh? I thought this coat looks about the best coat I have in the closet. 
And I made a choice to put this coat on. My wife didn't come jerk me around, say, sit down and put the coat on me. She said, stop fighting me, put the coat on. It looks nice. I made a choice to go in the closet and put the coat on. Why? Why did I do that? Why? I wanted to look good. Right? Reasonable? That's exactly why I put the garment of praise on. I put the coat of praise on. I want to look good. I want to look good. I want to feel good. Huh? Huh? Most of the things that you do is because you want to feel better. <laughs> That's exactly why I receive the oil of joy. Because I want to feel better. I'm interested in feeling better. And the beautiful thing of it is, is there's no end to feeling better. And just you keep feeling better and better and better and better. And there's no end to feeling better and better and better. And when you've got fullness of joy, there's still yet some more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it won't take long. You walking around like this, and people are going to look at you. Nations are going to come running to you. Not hard to make disciples out of nations when nations come running to you. And, it, and, and you don't have to start with nations. Just start with your, the people in your own household. Wow, mama's changed. She's not always walking around. <laughs> That's not sunshine. Uh -uh, that's not sunshine. She's not, well, she's, not, she's not sad. Mom's changed. What's happened? Oh, she gave herself over to the joy of the Lord. <coughs> Salvation has come to her house. Dad's not on grumpy anymore and always just fussing about everything. What's going on? Have you ever noticed that everybody spouses? Have you notice? that your spouse wants you to change so that they can be happier? <laughs> hey, have anybody noticed that? I wish you'd change. Miserable around here. No, she's like she is because you like you are. <laughs> you, you probably like you are because she's like she is. <laughs> and who's going to change first? Ray said, go. <laughs> In Jesus' name. You can't live around somebody who's got joy and speak them on full of glory too long not get happy. <laughs> oh, Pastor, you just don't understand it. You just don't understand. My husband's so miserable and my, if he would just be a little bit more happy, we could get along better. And you're thinking, I know why he's miserable. <laughs> Here we are. Are we going to follow him? I know what he's doing. I can do it with him. God, the Holy Ghost, fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace. That's what he's doing. Fruit, the evidence. We know where he's at. Somebody says, well, you know, I'm just not that way. <laughs> you want to be that way. <laughs> huh? I was praying about some folks the other day. I said, Lord, I don't ever really see them in church getting really excited. They're just like stoic. An emotionalist. Just, emo just like this. <laughs> just try it. Let me try it. Try to hold it for a second. I can't do it. I can't do it. I said, Lord, what if I followed them around? Would I see any great burst of excitement? Yeah, when they're playing volleyball. Oh. Lord, too bad you don't play volleyball. <laughs> They could get happy about you. <laughs> Lord, too bad you're not a quarterback. Sorry, Lord Jesus, you're not a baseball star. <laughs> Sorry. You would have a lot of people happy, excited. Most everything that God is doing is an unseen realm. So you're going to have to get excited about an unseen realm. That's right. Most everything that God is doing is an unseen realm. But oh my goodness, 
it has the greatest impacts upon our heart and our life because nothing can impact you like love and nothing can impact you like joy and nothing can impact you like peace and nothing can impact you like goodness and nothing can impact you by, like long-suffering and pray God that the Holy Ghost is long-suffering. That's who He is. That's what He does and He's trying to teach us to be like Him and I'm so glad that He is and that He does long-suffering because we're pretty slow learners. The thing that changes it all is hunger. Amen. The thing that changes it all is hunger. I want to change. I'm hungry to change. Change is so impossible, you've got to be desperate for it. Change is so impossible, you've got to be desperate for it. Change is so impossible, you've got to be, you got to be desperately hungry for it. a catastrophe. A great crisis must happen in your life. A great crisis happened in my life, the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. it's great crisis of the cross of Christ happened in my life. Huh. A great event happened in my life. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. It's a great event. I was touched by the glory of God and I said, oh, I can live in this? Okay, Lord, I want to learn how. That I can at any moment in time, because listen, you think, well, the Holy Spirit, He's just going to do it uh, um, because He's around and, and it's apart or separated from your will. It's just this passive thing that God does without your active involvement. No. Uh -uh. Be continually filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine. Be drunk in the Holy Ghost. Don't be drunk with wine. Be drunk in the Holy Ghost. That's why Paul says, he lays it out in, in Ephesians chapter 5 and he's telling how people have lived their life and he's telling about how we lived our life and how we've got to the, the, the things that, that are there are challenging us and, 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 and encouraging us have nothing to do with unrighteousness, have nothing to do with wickedness. Understand that the fruits of the Spirit is in all righteousness and goodness and peace and lays this out and says, listen, don't be unwise, be wise. Redeeming, the, knowing what the will of God is. Redeeming the t days or the time because the days are evil. Don't be drunk with wine, we're in his excess, but be continually filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak into yourself in psalms and hymns. He told us how to do it. Now the question is, it's not, we think it's for information purposes. Oh, I know how, I can quote that verse scripture. Big deal, big deal. Do you live that verse of scripture? Oh, I believe Jesus raised, rose from the dead. Well, that's good. But are you, have you risen with him? Has that, that resurrection impacted you to where it's brought a change? It's taken you from the quality of human life to divine life, from the situation of earthly cares to being caught away into a heavenly realm. Well, how has that impacted you? Everybody's really hypersensitive to orthodoxy, and I'm happy with that, except for their, their, <laughs> their criteria is lacking in many cases. But nonetheless, I mean, at least there's, it's a good commitment to be committed to orthodoxy, saying, I want to do it just like the word, I want to believe it just like the word of God says it. But how about orthopraxy? Where, is all, where all of a sudden do we become sensitive and say, you're not walking with God, you've got a frown on your face? Huh? A.A. A. Allen, he takes a person... And he, and he stands them up, and he, he's, he's praying for people that need to be delivered from demon spirits. And he says, see this woman? See how, look at her face. See how, look at that it's frown. See that frown? See that, that sedate frown kind of expressionless, expressionless uh, 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 look on her face? That's, that's a manifestation of the demon power that has hold of her. And I'm sitting there thinking, my goodness, AA, if you were around right now, the whole church would be in trouble. <laughs> If that's the way we're going to figure out who's demon-possessed and who's not demon-possessed. I mean, I'm telling you right now, we're in some serious trouble. How about if we put that on us? You know, hey, look, you know, that same love that's in him is not in you right now. Wait a minute, that same love that's in him is not walking in me right now. Therefore, I'm not walking in the Spirit. Ah, hallelujah. Now, all of a sudden, we got some serious 
criteria which need to be met, that yeah. needs to be met. And we don't have to be condemned for one second or disappointed or upset because now we can just simply turn to the Lord, acknowledge Him, say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your love, and He's going to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you get right yourself back over here. You're in the proper place, and you bless them that curse you and you, and you, and you love them that hate you, and you do good to those who despitefully use you, and, and, and all the more <laughs> you're loving and blessing and doing good to those who love you. Huh? I mean, come on, two hands for beginners. How long do I have to preach this sermon? The rest of my life, am I going to be like a cane? for beginners <laughs> listen to your saints you must love those who love you first and then, then you can learn <laughs> to love those who hate you because it seems to be it seems to be a, a message not not welcomed or, or not heard to where that I can go to my home and I can easily lay down my life for my wife and love her like Jesus loved me. And I'm going to try to export something out of the house that I don't have at home. And there's hierarchy of relationship. Did you know that? There's a hierarchy of relationship that God holds you responsible for. Did you know that? Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is the top on that hierarchy. The next one are the people, your spouse, closest to you. <laughs> your children, or maybe you're in the category of being a child in the house, parents, brothers and sisters. Do you want to be a burden to everybody around you? Or do you want to be a blessing? If you're going to be a blessing, then just start getting happy because that's a blessing. How many of you notice that it, being around happy people is a blessing? Yes. How many of you notice that being around sad people are always complaining is a burden? See, it's fine as I've just keep up here and I just keep it out here in the, in the, in the esoteric land of, I'm not really sure what he's saying, but boy, he's shouting and it feels good. But as soon as I start saying, look, let me just start getting practical with you about the change that needs to happen in your life. God wants to bring you into a radiant glow of happy all day long. Huh? That's, Father wants to bring me into a radiant glow of happy all day long. Father wants me to come to a place to where that, whereas before I would be sad or discouraged or upset or anxious, now I'm filled with his love and filled with his joy. I just choose. I say, I'm not going with that. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost, overwhelm me right now with your presence. This is God granting to us the privilege of repentance. God's not going to change his mind about his opportunity that he's given to you. I'll read this couple of verses of scripture to you here. Somebody said to me, he said, No, you're telling me you think we should be happy all the time. <laughs> you would not believe those who are uncertain about this conclusion. <laughs> and I, my answer to that is exactly, I know it seems very foreign to the life that you live, but he wants you to be happy all the time. He wants you to have fullness of joy all of the time it's so much have you ever noticed how much better it is to constantly just bless people and make peace and be gracious and kind to people do you know how much better that you feel doing that has anybody besides me noticed that huh how terrible you feel when you got to straighten things out and you get into an argument and you give somebody a piece of your mind and you, you have you noticed that contrast Why would we choose to feel miserable? Why don't we choose rather to feel good? And then why don't we just go ahead and take it to another level and let the Holy Ghost cause us to understand a good that goes beyond understanding. Here's Peter. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter says this. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you receive, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus looks at us. 
when he's staring at Nicodemus, he looks at every man that ever comes in this world. And he says, if you want to come into the kingdom, if you want to enter into this realm, you have to be born again. You have to be born of the Spirit. He looks at you and me right now as those who are born of the Spirit. And he says, now let me finish you. Now let me grow you. Now come, walk in the Spirit. Now that you've been born of Spirit, now that you've been made alive with the Spirit, now, now, now live in the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, li now live in this realm of divine, of, of divine goodness. And somebody says, really, can you tell me more specifically what that is about? Yeah, it's this. Relationship with Jesus. Relationship with Jesus. Relationship with Jesus will make you happy all the time. Relationship with Jesus will make you make your face to continually shine with the radiance of glory and of God's goodness. Because you can't stare at him and not be lit up with his presence. There's relationship with Jesus makes this peace that passes understanding real. Because he's the prince of peace. Relationship with Jesus. That's what causes the joy divine. It's unspeakable joy. It's a glorious joy. Hearing him tell us these wonderful things and speak these wonderful things of life to us. Look here in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted and your, that your sins may be blotted out. Look at this. Repent. Not condemnation. Repent. An opportunity now to no longer live under the reign of satanic terror, but from this day forward, walk in abundance of life. How can it be abundance of life? Because the Holy Spirit brings to us immeasurable, unlimited, eternal life. A supply of life that's like rivers, so voluminous, it's like rivers of living water coming to us, flowing into our life. Flowing out of our life. Acts chapter 10. In verse 45. And they of the circumcision, or those that were Jews, were astonished, as many as that came with Peter, because on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, who's sacred, who's absolutely not going to have anything to do with wickedness and sin and uncleanness, comes into our life to be with us, to fill us up on the inside, to supply all these wonderful, glorious things. Freely. Must it only be for a moment, just a spark? Just a week of joy. Oh, it was amazing. I gave my life to the Lord. I felt so much joy. Everything looked different. Wow, the lights are brighter. Wow, the, the birds seem prettier. <laughs> the, flowers, the flowers look more colorful than ever before. Well, that's good. That's wonderful. Man, there's a whole lot more than this. That's just start. Start. Father has provided all the life and fullness of Christ Jesus which is the express image of the Father. In fact, has supplied for us everything that he feels and everything that he has. You know why the man never had sickness, never had to go to the hospital? Because he spent so much time in the presence of the Lord. You can't spend that much time in the presence of the Lord and get sick. You just can't. <laughs> Wherever the river of life flows, among datas de pequilina makatana. How much time? I mean, come on. I just want, I'm, I'm dealing with you here this Sunday morning. I'm bringing this to a conclusion. And I'm basically talking to people who've called upon the name of the Lord at some point in their life. And I'm asking you. I'm just, I'm just laying it out for you. How much do you, time do you constantly spend in the manifest presence of the Lord? Oh, Pastor, we don't really have time to do that except for on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. That's the problem. It needs to become more valuable to you. I said, are you telling me that I could actually have the manifest tangible presence of the Lord and do my job? Yes, and better. 
than you've ever done it before. And people would be a whole lot happier to be around you. How does that happen? By simple request. You mean I don't have to earn it? No. It's a request where you want this more than anything else. More than anything else. Lord, I want more than anything else to be under your influence. To be wrapped in your divine glory. Let my words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be those expressions that only you can give. Let the demeanor on my face be the glory of your presence that's only possible when your wonderful Holy Spirit has full control of me. How much of the day do you live in that? And how much of the day do you live taking care of earthly things? You're going to have to decide, are you going to be continually led by the wind of emotion, the storm of emotion, and earthly cares and conditions? Is that going to lead you? Is that going to inspire what you say? Is that going to inspire how you feel? Is that going to inspire how you think? I can't believe so-and-so said that to me. I can't believe he did that. I can't believe it didn't work out. Why don't you start believing? Rather in what Christ Jesus said. And make him everything that you want, everything that you desire. And watch how much better things get. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people are disappointed because they didn't get healed. You know what? Let me tell you right now. If hands were laid upon you, you were healed. Otherwise, God's a liar. Because he said, you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Problem is, you're a Thomas and you're not going to believe it till you see it. And so you keep standing back in the line saying, I'm not healed, 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 I'm not healed. And I can say, they say that with every different, you just need to, every different area of life. You just need to say, Lord, I thank you, you honest and that you truthful and that you faithful concerning your promises? That I have those things which you said I have? I am those things that you said I am? And, I, I, and, I, and I'm living in that, those things which you gave to me? And I'm going to be everything that you purposed me to be? Now all of a sudden you got yourself a vision. And guess what? It's a heavenly vision too. <laughs> Hallelujah. And now you're believing God and living by the word. Instead of believing circumstances and living by the situation. Everything changes here. What God wants you to be able to respond to is unseen things. <laughs> God, want, God, the Holy Spirit, wants you to be able to look up into heaven and see what's going on in heaven and be moved by that instead of what's going on in the earth and being moved by that. I'm going to read one more verse of Scripture to you here. Chapter 11. Talking about the same group of people. What happened? God granted to them. Acts eleven eighteen. God granted to them this gift of repentance and what took place. The Holy Ghost came upon them. The Spirit of the Lord came upon them with all the beauty and all the splendor and all the wonderful things that only the Holy Ghost can bring that belongs to all the fullness of God. When he heard these things, when they heard these things, Scripture says they held their peace and glorified God, saying that God also has granted to the Gentiles repentance unto life. See that? What happened when God granted to the Gentiles repentance unto life? Go back to verse 45. Huh? Look what happened. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what did it, verse 45 say? And they that were with him saw that God had granted to the Gentiles also the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So, that's what it means to repent. That's what it means to repent. To no longer walk according to the course of this world, but now I get to walk according to the working and leadership and impact and influence and divine glory of the Holy Ghost. It's always a privilege. God's long-suffering. It's your opportunity. What are you going to do with it? What are you
are you going to do with it? I remember standing up one night in a church. Everybody that was there seemed to be pretty much overwhelmed with the glory of God. It was in a, a revival meeting in 1998. It was one of Rodney's meetings. And I stood up and I said, I'm, you know, it's beautiful to see so many people overwhelmed by the goodness and the glory of God. This is the life that he gave to us to live in and walk in. Now what are you going to do with it? How many of you going to live in it? How many are going to take it home and live in it? Instead of it just coming back to the meeting and being another experience. And then lay your hands on me again so I can feel like I did last time. No, that... That glory, anytime you felt the anointing come upon you in the manifest presence of the Lord, you receive something from heaven, a divine ability now. You receive something from heaven so that you now can live in it assures. It's been given to you. It was transferred to you. You felt it. You felt that virtue come into you. You felt that power come into you. You felt that anointing come into you. You just received something. Just like the woman with the issue of blood received her healing when she felt that power come in. When you felt that power, that glory, you felt that divine virtue, you just were given divine power. You just grew up. You just matured. You were just given ability. You were just granted a gift of God. You were just granted more within the context of that gift. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? How thirsty are you? Huh? How then how valuable is it to you once you've been touched by these riches? Is it true riches? Is it, the, is, it the, is it the stack of gold piled up to the sky? Hmm? Huh? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a treasure that's all yours and it's bigger than the oceans to contain? Yes, it is. And I have this treasure in me that the excellency of the glory and the power may be of God, not of us. People, hear me. There is now no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. If you're walking after your own human ability and you're relying upon yourself, you're going to be continually browbeated to no end. And brow, a browbeating is a terrible thing. You're never going to feel good enough. You're never going to feel worthy. Huh? I am feeling so worthy right now. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. You know why? And, and see, if I didn't feel worthy, I couldn't offer my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my, huh? Which is my reasonable ser service. Huh? He's made me worthy. He's counted me worthy. Huh? This, I'm worthy because of what Jesus Christ did for me. I have acceptance of the beloved because of what Jesus Christ did, did for me. I don't find my acceptance within the context of myself. I find my acceptance in the context of Jesus. I'm going to live there. And in this, in Christ Jesus, in, Christ, in Him, in Him, in Him. Some of you, your biggest battle is that you've allowed a demon spirit and even not only a demon spirit, just a mindset and a way of thinking that is wide open to condemnation, accusation, got to be better, got to do it better. That's the arm of flesh. Mm -hmm. You're never going to get anywhere there. One of the first things you're going to have to, I'm closing with this, one of the first things you're going to have to be willing to do is renounce that thing and say it doesn't belong to the redeemed, it doesn't belong to my relationship with the Lord. I'm not having it anymore, I'm not listening to it when it comes at me. And it's going to come with loudspeakers because especially if you've lived in it for more than a year, it's going to come with loudspeakers. If you've lived in it for a number of years, it's going to become with an irresistible voice and you've got to learn how to take up this wonderful authority in Christ Jesus and cast down those imaginations. Because it lies against the truth and it's going to keep you from ever living in the love. Living in the joy. Living in the goodness. Satan will be able to stop you. be able to be a hindering force. You know what God has done? He's empowered you. He says, now be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of my might. He says, be strong in my strength and the power of my might. So you can stand against all the wiles of the devil. How can I do that? It's the word of faith. Bring me that baby. Bring me that baby. Bring that baby to me. When I hear a baby crying, it's saying, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, please pray for me. I want to respond to the altar call right now. I love praying for babies who don't understand a single thing I'm saying because they're from another nation, Japan, Korea, wherever, and they get the same effect. Well, Pastor, please pray for me. Now, Father, I pray right now for the baby. And I pray for mommy and daddy and baby. 
And I speak peace and healing and strength into his little body and change into his life and into his family. Now, Father, we call in the lost right now. Those whose family members are in a prison of sin and despair. Today I have the key for you. If you're in a prison today of sin and despair, if you're in a prison today of discouragement, if you're in a prison today of despondence, you don't even, you don't even, it's like you don't even feel anymore because people get hurt that bad. I got the key for you. I have the key that unlocks the door. Jesus Christ is here to set you free. He's here to deliver you. The power of God is present to change everything about your life. You do not have to leave this place with the same kind of complaints that you had. You can record it. There are people, when they were 20 years old, had complaints, and when they were 80 years old, had the same complaint. It never changed. Suddenly, that 60 years passed them by. They were unaware that they lived every day, every week, every month, every year with the same problem, the same issue. I got the key to your prison. Amen. I have the key. I locks the door. I have the key. A divine authority. Today, Christ Jesus says to you, change is yours. Prison doors are open. All you have to do is be willing to simply obey His word. When you hear Jesus say, obey me, if you love me, obey me, what is it that you exactly that you are hearing Him tell you to obey? Because I'm afraid people are listening to the wrong thing. He wants you to obey Him and believe on His name. He wants you to obey Him and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. People are trying to obey with all these other concepts and all these other ideas. He wants you to come and obey Him. Just come and abide in Him. Live with Him and be with Him and walk with Him. Depend upon Him and let Him be yours and you be His. Amen. That's what He wants you to do. Today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God, fire God comes upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire God, press the fire God, mom. Ha, fire God, mom die. Ha, ha, fire God, mom die. Ha, ha, he Ha, ha, fire God, fire God comes on you. Fire, bind blown, you say. Jesus said, you'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost not many days from now. John came and baptized them with a baptism unto repentance. Jesus came and baptized us with a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. And that means baptism of love. That means baptism of joy by virtue of what the Holy Ghost is. That means baptism of peace. That means baptism of goodness. That means the baptism of life. Down the lava so kind of among that fire of God. The baptism of power and authority. The ability to stand against all the wiles of the enemy so that nothing can by any means hurt you. The fire of God right now in the name of Jesus. The baptism of divine glory. Sabra God de Landola Pai. Mandon de Beste. That's baptism of gifting. <laughs> The baptism of his goodness, the baptism of his life. Receive right now the Holy Ghost. Receive. The, when the Holy Ghost comes in, when the Holy Spirit comes in, every other kind of spirit's got to go. You understand me? When the Holy Ghost steps in, all the other kinds of spirits have got to go. Rusabara. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive Rusatai Mandalangalesho Hivrebete. Change right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Fire of God. Right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God upon your life. How God touches you right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God brings change now. Change right now in Jesus' name. Change right now. 
right now. The change comes. The joy comes. The life comes. The peace comes right now. The hunger comes. The thirsting comes. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. ha. <laughs> no more living a life in this earth. If you be risen with Christ, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. <laughs> For you are dead, and your life is hid in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are dead. You no longer live. Jesus now lives. That's just got to... Accept it. That's what the Lord wants you to believe. Hallelujah. For God. For you. For you. Holy Ghost. Right now. Jesus. Fire of his presence. Oh, Raman Jackai. Asto Toroneste. Lipa Katana. Nesepera. Bonda Lesita. Mamlaka. De Sitane Metoya. Right now in the name of Jesus. Now in Jesus' name. And the man is see You cannot escape this place. You thought you could come in and just peacefully listen to a little message? No. Nah. No, we lay hands on you and call the fire of God down upon your life. The fire of God, the fire of his joy, the fire of his presence, the fire of his line. Baptism, baptism, not pickled, baptized. Mandadaya, Malusaya, oh, Mindalekatana, oh, she's autumn, oh, Maninang Jang Lana, oh. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive right now. Receive Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive. Mama Langa. Mama Langa, Mama Langa, Mama Langa. Mama Langa, Mama Langa, 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Let your praise continually be a 
in my mouth. Now take a deep breath. In Jesus' name, I speak peace to your restlessness. Focus on the flow of this excellence. You might not know it, but I guarantee that it's a guaranteed fact that you're hungry. And you're hungry for what you can't see. You say it can't be, but it's true. No doubt. You wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is check yourself out. And yeah, that's you. Just an outward reflection, reflecting a mind, hoping things become clearer. Up one minute, down the next. Your life was never meant to be a sunset, but the light of the world shining brightly for all to behold. Now listen, listen, listen. It's been told, it's being told right now, and it will be told that a man that a woman shall not live 
by natural food alone. But in addition, you have to make a decision that your spirit is going to consume every word that proceeds from the mouth of God so that we might live. He sent that very same word to be made flesh. This truth, it came into the world and it was made manifest with ten fingers, ten toes, arms, legs, a beautiful face, and a heart that still beats in his chest. A son of man, descendant of Abraham, his name is Jesus. Encounter his presence and only then, only then do you truly know freedom. His kingdom is eternal and his judgments will stand as we do in this place with the authority to command the supply of the Spirit to be released and received. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, we release strength. We release faith. And we command it, Lord, to manifest in our life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, release, we release peace. And we command it to manifest in our life. In the name of Jesus. In the name. You can do that. Everybody you can raise your hands send, right now towards you heaven. Can, you can send all that condemnation away. Amen. In Everybody Jesus' name. You can heaven. say no. No. In Jesus' name. I don't receive discouragement. I don't receive doubt. I don't receive that. It goes from me now. I receive the peace of God. I receive the strength of God. And it manifests in my life right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this authority. Father, we thank you for great boldness. Father, we thank you for your fire burning in our lives, taking us deeper, taking us deeper, causing us to be more hungry, and then filling us up, and then causing us to be more hungry, and then filling us up, and then causing us to be so hungry, and then filling us up. Oh, God. Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, God, you're so good. Oh, God, you're so good. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hey, let me just share a revelation with you. You can't. Okay. You've gone past where you were supposed to be. <laughs> you know what? When the, when the, it's good, though. It's, it's good because when the anointing starts flowing, everybody can prophesy. That's good. That's good. And, and everybody can run around and shout. And that's good. And we want you to. We just want to be sensitive to what the Holy Ghost is doing. And want everybody to raise your hands towards heaven. Because, you know something, it's about, it's, a, it's an empowerment. It's that which we've received from heaven that we can give. You have nothing to give until you first receive it. And we're, what, what the Holy Ghost is doing right now at this moment in time in this meeting and in this place is he's wanting every person in this place to receive a divine power that only comes from him, a divine authority. We call it the fire of God. It's this realm of divine grace that changes everything. We wait upon him to do these things. And you know what? We minister for the sake of getting your heart ready to receive. We minister, we, this whole church service is really about bringing you to a place by the power of God so that you're, you're able to receive. Everything we do is about bringing you to a place so that you can receive a divine impartation from heaven. <laughs> and right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now in the name of the living God, I'm telling you the fire of God is burning in this place. The fire of God is burning in your heart. The fire of God is burning in your life. All of the things that belong to the plague of death, the plague of sickness and disease, the plague of spiritual poverty, it's burned up, it's broken. It's burned up, it's broken. Hallelujah. 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 Brava. 
Hallelujah. Nisha Karanaya. Kita la roba satarana. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the jumping up and down, running around, prophesying, Holy Ghost moving of God so sweep and take a hold of your life. There's not a single person that can sit still or be quiet. Everybody's going to be jumping around like Adam. Everybody's going to have a prophecy in the heart and in the mouth in the mighty name of Jesus, a praise upon their lips. Everyone is going to have the fire and the power of God working in their life, the healing power of God flowing through their hand in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll have to let Adam share the revelation later. Everything, everything that we have, everything that we have, we submit it to the Lord. Just isn't that beautiful? We're here, just tell everybody. I think more people need to do what Katrina's doing because so many people get healed in the meeting and, don't, and no one gets to know about it. Hallelujah. God just totally healed my arm. I haven't, I've had pain in this arm for four weeks. I haven't been really able to carry my baby around with it. It's been just weak and painful. I mean, where I couldn't straighten it, it was like this. It was painful. Totally straight. <laughs> Father. We thank you for your fire in Katrina's life. Thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. It starts about right there and works its way completely out every part of the body. Amen. Starts about right here. Poof. Consumes me. Hallelujah. 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 If you've had sickness or disease in your body, check yourself because I'll tell you the hidden power of God's here. Fire of God's here. When the fire of God comes, divine ability comes. When the fire of God comes, divine provision comes. When the fire of God comes, divine perfection comes. So you ought to check yourself because we're not speaking into the air, but we're speaking to the living God who's inspired us to say these things. <laughs> Hallelujah! Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you're watching by web and you have some kind of sickness or disease, you're dealing with viruses or flu, I command it to leave your body now in the name of the living God. I call for the fire God to come down in your room, right wherever you at right now. If you've been in a prison of, of circumstance, in a prison and situation that's caused you to feel like that you cannot move forward, I'm telling you the prison door is now open. Walk out and run in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. One more time, I just want you to lift your hands towards heaven. I just want you to know what God has done. I don't want you to be in doubt of what God has done. I don't want you to be in doubt of His presence. I don't want you to be in doubt of His provision for you. I like what Wigglesworth said. A man of faith, a model of faith. He said, I don't ask, what, I don't ask Wigglesworth how Wigglesworth feels. I tell Wigglesworth how he feels. Are you listening to me? Don't ask yourself how you feel. Tell yourself in Jesus' name that you're healed. Tell yourself in Jesus' name that you feel good from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, that you feel with the glory of God. Amen. Prophesy over your finances. People, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I believe God. And we're taking this thing and pressing it through. December 1st is the day that they told us that we're going to be able to take possession of the next property. And that's a Sunday. 
That's next Sunday, in fact. And I'm believing God that we're going to be able to take possession of it so that we can have church there next Sunday. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know Geneva went ahead and rented this place just so, and, and I, I, you know what? Fine. But if we, she can rent this place and just as a backup, but if that other place is open, which I'm believing God, it would be not the second, but the first. And we're just going to go over there for Sunday night at least. So we'll keep you informed. You know, I'm so blessed at what Geneva has been doing. She's, she's faithfully stood alongside of me in pastoring. And I, I mean, when I came back, I mean, when I felt the spiritual climate, I felt the church healthy. After being gone for 30 days, you're like, okay. But it was healthy. You, you were healthy. And, you know, and, and we, only, we only brought in one outside ministry. And I'm saying, this is good. That is somebody, that's somebody being you, all of you, grabbing a hold of truth and saying, Lord, we're going to walk with you. Dear people, we're, God has purposed us to take this and to a, another realm. It is a fiery Holy Ghost realm of a passion that he has to glorify the name of his son so that his church shines bright with his presence and power and authority. And that is not possible without the baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire. And that is not possible unless each individual is willing to do it God's way. Mm -hmm. So the Lord says, you're going to have to forsake your thoughts. The Lord says, you're going to, I'll bring nations to you. But you're going to have to quit spending your life on that which profits not. He's saying, if you're thirsty, come to me and I'm going to cause rivers of living water to flow out of your belly. He's saying, seek the Lord while he may be found. He's saying, forsake your thoughts. Let the wicked forsake his thoughts. Huh? He says, come, I got higher thoughts for you. I give you the mind of Christ. I give you the mind of the Spirit. To love those things and earnestly desire those things that I love and that I desire. This is what my la the laying on of hands is about. That's why we laid hands on you today. This is what we're prophesying. If you think I'm the same, Pastor Mark, that you knew two months ago, you're mistaken. I'm different. I'm a different Pastor Mark. If you're expecting... Say, Pastor Mark, you're going to have to go to find him. I don't even know, he don't even exist. You might find somebody that is like him somewhere. I'm not. I'm different. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I've, received, I've received abilities this past couple of months. I didn't have a couple of months ago. And we want the same thing for you. We're not trying to put ourselves in a position to, to, where, to where that we're above anyone. We're, we're, we're put in our position where we can serve everyone by giving you everything that we got. We just want to be a conduit. And for God gives it as God gives it to me, I give it away. Everybody, know, everybody knows me. If I put money in my pocket, it ain't, you know what? You want, if it's cash, you want to go to it? It's going to go into someone's hand or it's going to go in an offering basket. That's all I know what money's for. Credit cards are for buying clothes and gas. <laughs> money, money, money. Uh, I can't give a credit card. Money is forgiving. And I want to be that way, and God's made us that way with everything. He gives it to us, we give it away. He says, okay, I'm going to give you some more. And we give it away. Okay, I'll give you more. And I'm going to give it away. Okay, give it <laughs> And I came back to the United States of America determined, okay, Lord, I am going to give away these precious and sacred things to the people in the abiding place ministry because they want them. And, and the Lord showed me, he said, there's so many people that want to do more. They just don't know how to do it. And I've got to show them. And I'm telling you, when we, as we make a transition to this other building, I'm gonna, we're resourcing you. We're going to disciple those of you who are in that place to run and you want to go. We're going to show you by detail, step by step, exactly how to do it because that's how God has taught us. Hallelujah. And the fact of it is, the fact of it is, is that's the way he wants it. That's the way he wants it. So that everything can be perfectly joined together. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.
Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, we got a whole bunch of good surprises for you tonight, so come back. A bunch of good surprises in the God. A bunch of good surprises in the Holy Ghost. Come back. It's like Christmas time. You know, there's going to be presents to open. Hallelujah. Gifts you've already received, but you don't even realize because you were sitting there in the presence of a meeting like this and did not know what all was happening to you because you had the wrong measuring device, because you had the wrong indicators. You were looking for the wrong thing. <laughs> But I'm telling you, listen, we're going to rush on this city. You listen to me. We are going to rush on this city. We're going to climb up the walls. Great is the army that carries out his word. We're going to spoil the strong man's house. Satan has been a strong man in Tokyo. He's been a strong man in San Diego. And I'm buying the strong man because Jesus Christ has all authority in earth. I bind the strong man. He said, whatever I bind on earth, you bind in heaven. I'm, I'm a, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and binding the strong man we're re, the strong man who's imprisoned people we're releasing the people of God to go and spoil the house that's what we're doing here that's what's happened here this morning power of God fire in the presence of God somebody said didn't pray for me long enough I'm going to tell you right now one of the things, I would just say this again, I would say this again. When you're praying for thousands of people, it's just quick. You didn't need to pray, I didn't even pray any longer. Well, if he would have laid hands on me a little bit longer, I probably would have received some kind of an impartation because then maybe I would have started shaking or so. You don't have to, nothing can happen. You could just sit there and nothing, seemingly nothing happens. What God does is an unseen realm. God does it in an unseen realm. Hallelujah. Adam, that was awesome, man. That was awesome. We're going we're to hear that revelation. I know God's giving you revelation. We'll hear that later. I want everybody jumping around like that. I mean, the fire, when the fire of God's around and you're receiving, you're jumping. You're jumping. You're jumping. You're jumping. I don't care, what you, I don't care who you say you are. What, what's your ancestry's like? Huh? True. You come over and do this ancestry that I got, being born of God, dad is almighty God. That's my ancestry. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Ah, Jesus is my kinsman, my brother, praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it's born of the Holy Ghost. Ah. I act like them. You are too. Amen. We're not gonna be, you're not going to be afraid to shout no more. You're not going to be afraid to run around no more. You're not going to be living in the prison of everybody's opinion how you ought to act. You're going to let go and let God take control. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I want you to come worship the Lord with your, with your giving, with your tithes, with your offering, and, and bless Him. And if anybody wants me to pray for them, I'm here to pray for you. I want to pray for you. But I want you to also find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.